Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Aya Neo Air Plus. Now, the Indiegogo is live right now. With this unit here, they're actually offering three different CPU variants that you can choose from. But in this video, we're taking a look at their highest-end model, and this is coming in with that Ryzen 7 6800U. The Air Plus is definitely one that I've had my eye on since they've announced it, and one of the main reasons is the form factor. Now, while we did see the iNeo Air and the Air Pro, but those were using lower-end chips than we have here. We've got Ryzen 6000 with RDNA 2 graphics in this one. And if you remember correctly, the Air and the Air Pro had a 5.5-inch display. This one here is coming in at 6 inches. Unfortunately, it's not OLED. It's still a really beautiful IPS display, and I think it's kind of the perfect size for a little handheld like this. Inside of the box, obviously, you're going to get the handheld itself. Now, specs will differ depending on the model you choose, but uh, when it comes to accessories, we get a 65-watt PD fast charger. Also comes with a few different wall adapters for different parts of the world, a USB Type-C charging cable, and we also get two USB Type-C to full-size USB adapters because this unit here only has USB Type-C. We don't have an extra full-size port on the unit itself. So straight out of the box, this is going to be running Windows 11, and personally, I do like this display. I think it looks really good, and we've got an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, and so everything's going to scale up really nicely on this display. It also has dual stereo speakers and micro SD card support, and up top, they've also included a fingerprint sensor, which allows us to log into Windows really quickly. The overall design here is very reminiscent of the original iNeo Air and the Air Pro, but it is a bit larger given that we have that 6-inch IPS display. They've also included hall sensor-based analog sticks and hall sensor-based analog triggers around back. One thing that I really love about these Aya devices is the D-pad. This is definitely one of the best D-pads in handhelds right now. It's the same D-pad they used in the Aya Neo 2 and the Aya Neo Geek, so we've got a very accurate D-pad, plus it feels great for fighting games and even platformers. Now, like I mentioned, they are offering a few different variants of this when it comes to the iNeo Air Plus, and the one we're taking a look at is the highest-end model with the 6800U, but they have two other models, well, actually three other models. You can opt to pick one up with the AMD Mendocino chip, the 7320U or the 7520U, and they're also offering an Intel variant with the i3-1215U. Now, there are some differences between all three of the models, but just keep in mind, the 6800U version will be the highest-end. Before we go any further with this unit, I did want to give you a quick size comparison with some of the other more popular handhelds on the market right now. So first up, we've got the iNeo Air Plus versus the iNeo Air Pro. As you can see, they're very similarly sized, but when it comes to that iNeo Air Pro, we get a 5.5-inch OLED display instead of the 6-inch IPS and the new Plus. Next up, we've got the iNeo 2 and the iNeo Geek. Obviously, right in the middle there, we've got the Plus, which is coming in a lot smaller than both of those devices. And finally, the Steam Deck, which is definitely one of the larger handhelds on the market right now, but you really can't beat the price versus the performance of the Steam Deck, and that's one thing that a lot of companies just can't match right now. But I still wanted to show you a size comparison here, just to give you an idea of how portable the Plus really is. But for being such a compact and small form factor handheld, they sure have packed a lot of tech in here because when it comes to the APU, we've got the AMD Ryzen 6800U. 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 2.7 GHz with a boost up to 4.7. You can opt for either 16 or 32 GB of RAM with this, but both of them are going to be using LPDDR5 running at 6400 MHz. Also have some storage options here, 512, 1TB, 2TB. And the Plus actually utilizes an M.2 2280 double-sided SSD, so you can actually go up to 8 terabytes on your own if you wanted to upgrade this. We've also got micro SD card support, a 6-inch IPS display at 1920 by 1080 with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's 100% sRGB, 85% DCI-P3, and 400 nits of brightness here. It looks really good. Two USB 4 ports, a fingerprint sensor, hall sensor sticks and triggers. It's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and we've got a 46.2 watt hour battery with 65 watt PD quick charging capabilities. I mean, this is actually a pretty big battery given the form factor of this unit. And yeah, out of the box, this is running Windows 11, but Aya Neo is working on Aya OS, which is based on Linux. It's going to be an awesome Linux distro, and as soon as I can get my hands on it, we'll be testing it on a few of their devices. But with Windows here, we do have access to their Aya space, which comes in really handy for these devices. 
From here, we've got a lot of tweaking and tuning that we can do with the APU here, like changing the TDP. We've got a few different presets. And by the way, this will go up to 28 watts. The built-in cooler here is rated for 28 watts on the 6800U, and it'll definitely handle it. And along with IS Space, we've also got their game launcher, which is pretty cool. It does scrape the metadata for you. It'll automatically scan your games. And with this, we can set up a per game configuration so we can change the TDP as soon as we start the game up. But one thing that's really awesome here, we don't see in a lot of other handhelds on the market, is just kind of a dedicated device manager. From here, we can go in and fully adjust the analog sticks, the triggers, we can adjust the RGB, we can set the dead zones, you can change up the vibration or the haptics feedback here. And uh, yeah, I mean, this comes in really handy for totally customizing everything on the device. And if we back up, we've got a few more settings that we can mess around with, like our extra buttons, which are kind of not visible, but up top on the unit, we've actually got two extra kind of shoulder buttons here. They're kind of built into the frame, it seems like, but they work out well and we can fully customize them. Plus, RGB around the analog sticks can be customized also. You can also set them up to go off at a certain time, so that way when you're playing in bed at night, you won't have those shining in your eye. But yeah, I think they've done a great job with the of Space over the last year, and it's only getting better and better because they recently released a few mini apps, and my favorite here is known as Smart TDP. Really easy to download through iSpace. Once you download the app and open it up, it's gonna look something like this. Now this is really awesome because we can choose our desired frame rate, 30 FPS, 35, 40, 45, up to 60. Whatever frame rate we choose and then start up a game, it's gonna try its hardest to adjust the TDP and the clocks to that frame rate per game. We can also disable turbo mode, which will send more wattage to the GPU if a certain game needs more GPU than it needs CPU to try to save on that wattage. And in theory, with a lot of games, we can save battery life. And in my full review video, we'll be taking a look at this, but for everything I'm gonna be testing in this video, I'm gonna set a static TDP directly from IS Space. Now with all that out of the way, it's time to see how this thing really performs. Okay, so jumping into one of my favorite games here, we've got Forza Horizon 5, and I'll show you that we are at 15 watts on the TDP. Also listed on the left-hand corner in Afterburner. But with this game, we can see how well it performs at 15 watts, and we can also test out these analog triggers. Remember, these are hall sensing, so uh, we've actually got a really accurate signal here, and it comes in very, very handy for racing games just to kind of feather that throttle. I personally use this a lot when I'm drifting in my favorite racing games, and another thing it's great for is just launch control. But it does feel really good here, and uh, we can run this game at a very high frame rate given what we have here only at 15 watts. Remember, 1080p medium settings. We're averaging 81 FPS, 1080p medium settings, and it does look great on the 6 inch IPS display. We could get a lot more out of it by going up to 28 watts, or your best bet to just kind of save battery life is to turn V-Sync on, lock it down at 60, and have a really great time with it. I will tell you that if I drop this down to 720p at 28 watts, we can get an average of around 108 FPS out of this game. Next up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, and with this, I did go up to 20 watts, so I'm just using the preset, we're not using the auto TDP setting or anything like that. 720p, Steam Deck preset, we're getting an average of 64 FPS. Now, if we took this down to low instead of using that Steam Deck preset, we can get an average of around 78 FPS at 720p, 20 watts here. Or if you're looking to save a little bit of battery life, Take it down to low settings, 15 watts, lock it at 60. You're going to have a great time with this game. Next up, we've got Horizon Zero Dawn, and this was really impressive. I actually had to go back and check all of my settings just to make sure I wasn't running at a lower resolution or something like that, because, uh, you know, I haven't seen it perform like this on a handheld yet. 720p original settings, and we're still at 20 watts, just like we were with Cyberpunk 2077. We got an average of 82 FPS out of this game, and it's totally possible to play this at 900p 20 watts if you wanted to. 
Of course, I had to test out one of the new Spider-Man games, and here we have Spider-Man Miles Morales. I'll tell you, with that auto TDP, it really helps out with the wattage on this game to try to keep that 60 FPS frame rate. Right now, I'm at 28 watts, 720p, low settings, and as you can see, this little handheld is trying its hardest to keep this at a steady 60 FPS, but with that auto TDP enabled, it actually can send more to the GPU, and I've noticed with this game on these APUs, setting a static clock on the CPU and GPU really does help out. Usually, I go to around 2000 megahertz on the GPU and 3.7 on the CPU for Spider-Man Miles Morales. I also wanted to test at least one fighting game, so I went with Mortal Kombat 11, 1080p, medium settings, running at 60. This is one of those games that's going to perform really well on this APU at a higher wattage. Now we could go down to low settings, 60 FPS, 15 watts if you wanted to, but at medium, I think it looks great on this display and it runs amazingly. We've got one more racing game here. I figured I'd go with Dirt 5 720p with a low medium mix. This is a really hard one to run. Now we do have dynamic resolution that we can actually enable from the settings in the game itself, but we've got it turned off right now. We could do this at 900p, low settings over 60, but with a low medium mix, 720p, we're getting an average of around 74 FPS. And finally, we've got God of War, 720p original settings, and I am at 28 watts. This is one of those games that's really hard to run on these APUs. In fact, the only one I've ever been able to get it to run at full speed or over 60 FPS on is the 6900HX at about 65 watts. We're not going to go up to 65 watts with this to keep those clocks up on the GPU and CPU to save battery life, but it's really, really close here. All right, so first impressions here, loving the form factor. Got a beautiful screen, definitely not as nice as something like we have in the Geek or the INEO 2, but it's getting real close. And for a smaller form factor unit, I think it's a really great size. These stereo speakers do sound really good. I'm glad they kind of did a little bit of an upgrade there. Uh, got plenty of sound coming out of this thing. One thing I'd love to test is an eGPU using one of these USB 4 ports. I'll be doing that in my next video, so definitely stay tuned. But uh, so far, performance is great. It's definitely on par with the other 6800U handhelds on the market right now. So, I mean, if you're interested in learning a little more, I'm going to leave a link to their Indiegogo and their official website. Remember, they're offering three different variants, and the 6800U is going to be their highest end model. So if you're looking for something for AAA gaming, this is definitely the one to get your hands on. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. I will have at least one more video coming up, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. It'd be pretty cool if you could hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. And let me know in the comments below what you want to see tested on the new iNeo Air Plus. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.